Hey designers, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at how to create a text field component for your design system. And of course, we'll be making it interactive. This is episode one of interactive design system. Let's dive right in and get started. You can follow along with this video using the community file linked in the description. You will find a text field auto layout frame when you open the community file and come to the follow along page. Let's understand all the layers inside this frame. The first layer is another auto layout frame called field. This is present here to support assistive text in your text field component as you can see in this finished component. We need two different auto layout frames to support assistive text. Getting back to our follow along page, we have two more auto layout frames nested inside the field frame. The first one is called label and it has a label text layer nested inside it. Pretty self explanatory. The second frame is called input text. This frame is logged and the opacity is set to 0%. This frame has two text layers inside it, hint text and input text. I'll get to both of these a little later on. Great. Now that we understand our layers, let's go ahead and create a component from a text field frame. I will rename it to text field v1.0. Let's add a variant to this component by going to the right side panel and hitting the plus next to the properties. We can select variant here. Next, change property 1 to state. We can let the first state be default. Let's add another variant to our component. We can do this by holding down option or alt if you are on windows and dragging down our first variant. We can change the new variant's name to focus. For this variant, we want to make the state where the user has tabbed on the input field but has not started typing anything just yet. Our label should be present somewhere on top of the field, so we can go ahead and turn the label frame to absolute position. This will help us break out of the auto layout rules that it would have to follow otherwise. We can change the size and line height of the text to 12 and 16 respectively and change the width of both the label text and the frame to her contents. We can add a fill to the frame as well. Let's move this frame up and position it where we would want our label to be. I'll also go ahead and change the background color of our component so that we can visualize everything a little bit better. Now before we start playing around with the input text frame, there is one very important step that we need to take. Let's turn our label text into a component property. I will tell you why this is so important when you get to the results of our prototype. We can do this by tapping on the icon next to the label text in the right panel. And we can change the name of the property to label. Let's also apply the same property to our label text in the first variant. Now coming back to our second variant, let's change the opacity of the input text frame to 100% and uncheck the absolute position toggle in the top right. We can also unlock this frame now. Make sure that the input text layer remains locked here. You only need to unlock the frame. Now we can select the hint text layer and create a new property for this. Name it hint text. Let's go ahead and create a blinking cursor for our text wheel. Create a new rectangle and change the width to 2 and height to 20. We can change the color to something dark and turn it into a component. Change the name of this component to cursor v1.0 but remember to add a dot before it. The reason for adding this dot is that we probably don't want to publish this cursor in our design system and adding this dot help us avoid publishing this component by mistake. We can create a new variant here and selecting the cursor component change property 1 to state. We can then change the state of the variant to on and the second variant to off. Let's change the opacity of the rectangle within the off variant to 0%. And just to keep things nice and tidy, change the rectangle layer's name to cursor in both variants. Let's add prototyping here. Go to the prototype tab and draw a connection from the first variant to the second one. Change the activation to after delay, animation type to smart animate, easing to ease in and out and time to 200 milliseconds. Draw a connection from the second variant to the first one and add the same settings. 
make sure you change the delay timing to 200 milliseconds on both your connections. Now we can copy our on variant to the focus variant in our text field. Paste it inside the input text frame and move it before the hint text layer. We can quickly add an instance of our focus variant to a frame and see our cursor blinking in a prototype. Great, with that done, let's add another variant to our text field. We can call this one typing. Let's unlock our input text layer. And change our hint text layer to absolute position. Next, turn off absolute position for input text. Move the hint text layer a little to the left and change the opacity to 0% and make sure to lock this layer. Now select the input text layer in all three of our variants and create a new text property. We can call this one input text. Now we can move the cursor to the right of the input text layer and change the width to fill container. Also change the width of the input text frame to fill container as well in the second variant. Now let's add our final variant, we can call it filled and simply remove the cursor component from this variant. And that is it, you have just created all the variants you require for a basic text field. One thing to note here is that you can change the border color of the two active states, the focus and typing state to indicate that the field is active, but I'll skip over this for now. Let's add some prototyping here. Draw a connection from the first variant to the second and change the easing to gentle. Do the same for the second and the third variant as well. Great, now we can add an instance of our component to a frame and see it in action. Now if we want to customize all the different text layers that we have in our text field, we can do that for each instance of our text field component. So in this example, we can add a different set of text for our name field and a different set of text for our email field. And that's it. Make sure that you check out the community file in the description. It has 64 variants for this text field, including support for icons, assisted text, links, and more. Thanks a ton for tuning in. Make sure to like, subscribe for more design insights. Until next time, happy designing.